This week, continuing the Olympic lifts. So last week we did the snatch. If you weren't here, I decided to just put all of the videos from last week into one longer one, so it's like 20 minutes of actual stuff. Oh, yes. LMS. I also put three separate videos. Congratulations, you figured out <laughs> how to put the camera and not have to hold it, right? So um, there's three other videos on LMS that California Strength did on the Snatch, so if you, go, you can also watch those. Those ones are pretty good. It's just a slightly different way of teaching them. Um, but very, very close to how we did it in class. This week we'll go over the clean, so I put the same three videos from uh, California Strength Day. Basically it's going to be the same thing we go over here in class, so you can watch those as well. Um, I also put videos for the jerk, because we'll go over that next week. Okay? Um, submission for your video, like final project, is open. So you can do it whenever you want. You can start submitting those. Um, rubric, if you want to know what I'm looking at, looking for, it's all in there in LMS on that final video project. So submission stuff's open, you do it as long as it's submitted by, I think the date's like the 30th or the 1st. One of the two. I'll double check on that. It should be, it's that last week of actual classes. Because that's your final grade, that's your final exam. Okay? Um, the clean, let me go over today, we're basically going to go back through a lot of the same positions that we went through with the snatch last week. The only difference with the clean is that instead of catching that bar overhead, we're now catching it in a front squat position. Okay? If you've trained with any of your teams in here, you've probably done power cleans. Sometimes, and this is one of the things, is this is one of those butchered movements. You know, you have all these Instagram fail videos where you've got people doing starfish and they do this and they stand it up and they've got all their buddies like slap them in the back and they walk away with a hernia, right? Being able to get a bar from the floor, catching, and we're gonna add a component today which is considered a full clean, down into a front squat, okay? So we're gonna go through, we're gonna break that movement down just like we did last week into very similar components, okay? So, and I remember what our first little bit was last week. Had something to do with little short orange dudes. Oompa Loompas, right? So we're gonna take this right back to our power position. Now with the clean, we're looking at a grip that is just outside our shoulders, right? So we can use the center of that bar to measure out even hands. All we're doing is shoulders back. We can put our feet right underneath our hands, maybe point our toes out a little bit. So when we get down to the hang, right, we bring our knees back and out of the way. So weight's gonna go in the middle of your foot. All we're doing here, oompa loompa, so you're just sitting straight down, jump, and shrug. You're just coming up on the ball's feet. Oompa loompa, jump, and shrug. And we're just going to keep that bar close, okay? So we're going to get there in a second. When we look at warming up for this, because we always kind of go through a couple movements, you're just going to go through the following three things twice, okay? First one, we've done before. We've done this little shoulder movement here, keeping everything nice in line, all the way up, reaching, turning that thumb down, bring it back up. Because when we look at catching this clean, we need to be able to get in this position where we can get our elbows up, okay? So we're gonna go in that little shoulder car, that circle, rotating up, all the way back around. You're gonna go 10 reps on each arm, okay? This next one, if you've done yoga, you might recognize this position, but when we actually look at catching this clean, in the bottom of a squat here, we need to be able to open up our hips a little bit more. So this is the one that gets kind of funky, you're basically going to go, I, I consider it a frog rock. I think it's considered the frog position in yoga. You're basically going to get your feet really far out. And you're going to try to sink back into this position and then bring your hips forward. So you're going to sink back, rock forward, and you do 10 of those. Notice how the feet are flared out, right? You're probably going to feel a real big stretch right here in the front of your hips. Okay? The last thing is we're just going to try to open up your back. So we're just going to stay in that all fours position. All you're going to do is go from 
cow, right? If you ever seen a cow got that big arch back. <laughs> and this scared cat, right? So reaching, trying to reach your shoulder blades forward down the floor, and then reverse it, looking all the way up. Reach, okay? You're just gonna go through 10 reps of each of those two times through. All right? And then any questions of those? So shoulder, reaching all the way around, 10 on each arm. Then you got a little frog rock, 10 total. Then you've got a little cat cow there, 10 total there. We're gonna do that twice. All right? So do that right now just so we can get everything warmed up that way we start to get into some of these positions when we get to the clean. Little movement warm up here. Our first phase and then our second phase, we're gonna put them together, especially if you were here last week, it'll start to flow together a little bit. If you weren't here last week, you'll probably pick up on this first two parts pretty quickly. Okay? So we've got that bar just outside the shoulders, measuring out using the center. Our snatch grip was out here where it's making contact with the mid, like that bone in your hip, right in the front, okay? The clean, you're gonna be top of your thigh. Now, if you've got super long arms, like if you're Adam over here, whose arms are probably like eight feet long, yeah, you might get a little wider, all right? My arms hang down, dead gum, near my like knees, right? I just had a really short torso. My grip's a little wider. Yours might be a little narrower, just depending on how long your arms are. We're really looking for top of the thigh, all right? Middle to the top of the thigh is where we want that bar to sit. So, in that position, the first thing, we got a little oompa loompa. So weight right here is gonna be about the middle of the foot. Shoulders are back, all it is, jump, shrug. Jump, shrug. We wanna keep this bar close, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do 10 reps like that. The next time you come through, Right, what was our little thing we told, told the snatch, right? Everybody remember from last week? Jump, shrug. Caleb, come on. I know you know this one. This is the one you... You know this one? No? Uh, I don't like this one. She doesn't like this one, right? Take your shirt off. Okay? Oh. Jump, dip, right? You got a little blue one. Jump, shrug. Take your shirt off. Keep the bar close. Now, don't look down at the bar. I don't want to be here. Because then we might nail ourselves in the ribs, we might, if you're me, nail yourself in the forehead, okay? Oblupa, jump shrug. The second set, oblupa, jump shrug, pull your shirt off. We're trying to keep those elbows high and outside, okay? So if we keep those elbows high and outside, when we go to catching it, it's gonna make it easier to bring our elbows under to get the bar onto our shoulders. So here's what I want. You can do it two ways. You can do two sets of five of the jump shrug, and two sets of five of the jump shrug shirt off, or just one set of 10 of each. I want you to actually do this, because if you don't actually do this, then the chance that you'll get hurt coming in front to do this on your own and learning this on your own is higher. Okay? We've got all, we got five bars right here. No, one, two, three, four. No, one, two, three, four. Four bars. Wow, four is crap again. Four bars. Let's go for it. Put two and three together. Come on, what do we get when we put two and three together? Five. No. Oh. He wasn't here last week, which is why I decided to go this now. <laughs> what? what? When you get two and three together? Oh, you weren't here last week either. Five. Really? Five. 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 It's a trick. It's a trick answer. Take two and three. Put them together. What do we get? Okay. <laughs> Come on, you can back to the Yes, I do. So, 23. Who wears number 23? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, right? So, we're going to go back to our Michael Jordan drill that we did with the snatch. So, we're getting in that into a little position. Yeah. We've got those toes out. We're trying to keep those shoulders back. Bringing our knees back out of the way. So, we're breaking. Knees come back and out of the way. Now we want to be in this position. Notice, if I do a snatch, I'd be a little bit more bent over. So my chest is going to stay up a little higher in this position. So, oompa loompa, lowering the bar, knees come back and out of the way. Notice where my shoulders are in relation to the bar. Right? I'm in front of it a little bit. I'm not here, 
If I go too squatty, my shoulders are going to get behind the bar. Mm. Reaching those shoulders a little bit in front, and you're literally just almost coming right back here. Right? It's almost like you're kind of scooping it or sweeping the bar up your legs back to the blue butt. So knees come back another way, right back to position. It's the most important part. Because if you can't do this, then we lose all the power. Everything, if we were to say, watch somebody jump, right? Basketball, right? You go for a rebound. If you're watching her jump, at some point she's probably gonna hit here. All of a sudden we get, yeah, you put a bar in your hands, it's the same thing. We're able to get that motion correctly. Now we're gonna be able to generate power. Okay? You ever seen a short white dude jump? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Right? Yeah, right? <laughs> hey! In case jump. anyone did, I got you guys. Yeah, right? <laughs> You're not that short, Jimmy. Jim's got me on the jumps there. All I'm right? sure why I did. Have you ever seen the video of like the tiny little Asian dudes jumping on stacks of weights? Yes. Yes? You actually have like big stack of little mm -hmm. red weights, you got all these like tiny little Asian dudes who are giggling, laughing because they're all like up to their noses. Right? That's the Japanese Junior National Weightlifting Team. So all those kids like 15, 16, they just do this all the time, right? So they're always hitting this position. So when we jump, we're in that position. So now if we can get here and practice this, we actually get the most benefit from our snatch and from our clean by just mastering that position, right? That's why I said Michael Jordan drill, Michael Jordan wins championships. So if we master this position, everything tends to go a little bit smoother for us. So in that position, Oompa Loompa, knees come back on the way, shoulders are just in front of the bar, bring it right back to Oompa Loompa. Two sets of 10. You use to reach a bunch of different goals, all right? So now the catch tall, right? So a lot of times people call this a power clean, all right? They only just call this whole movement of power clean, but when we look at power, and we take physics, physics, and we know what power is, the byproduct of strength and speed. Strength and speed, and pretty close, right? Force times velocity. Okay? So if we multiply the amount of force that we put in the ground by velocity, now if we actually break down velocity, it's meters per second or distance divided by time. So the main thing we have to think about is the distance aspect. So if I catch this bar now, when we go through, lower it down, back to the blue buff, jump shrug, high pull, and you're going to drop and punch your elbows through. You catch. This would be considered a power clean, right? Because I've moved more distance. If we sit here, right, I catch on a club parallel, still a power clean. Now, with this, as we start to add, right, this whole process we're going through right now, we consider it hang power clean, so not going from the floor. When we go through this process, right, notice where my feet go. We get front squats, they just drop right into my squat stance. So it's literally going to be up, jump into your front squat stance. Okay? Your front squat stance might be the same as your back squat stance. Our big thing, is to not go starfish. Right? This is where we're running knee issues and feet issues and hip issues. Sometimes you even see shoulder issues come out of this because it means your catch might be like down here, like on your wrists. So what we're gonna look for, go blopa, knees back and out of the way, go blopa, jump shrug, high pull, punch your elbows through and just drop a little bit. Not dropping fully in that squat yet. Okay. okay. Punch the elbows through. So those elbows come from this position. Punch. It's almost like if I were to stand here, if I were to punch her in the face of my elbows, I'm here. Punch. I'm gonna knock her eyes out. All right. Don't worry. I'm gonna let you do that. All right. So here's what I want you to do. We're gonna break this down into three parts. So, make it a seven here the first one, right? Move a little bit up, down to the knee, back, jump shrug, then do it with a high pull. 
the low block, down the knee, jump shot high pole, and then the third time you do it, punch the elbow through. The low block, down the knee, jump shot high pole, punch the elbow through. Notice I let it touch my shoulders. Alright? If I really wanted to, you could lose the arms, they could sit there. It's just resting on the shoulders. So, go through those three phases. Oompa knee, jump shrug. Two things here. Only chicken. Two, two things that are going to help, because we showed it to I mean, Adam. I'm trying to start breaking out. Sure I hate every bit of it. Here, right? So, there's one way that this kind of helps a little bit. So, especially with this, it's a little uncomfortable at first, but, your brain, when it has to produce force, has to send signals to the muscle to make you do something, right? Like if I sit here and I extend my leg, there's a signal going from my brain to my quad and hamstring to curl and kick my leg right here. Well, there's about 10,000 nerve endings in your hands. So just to hold on to this takes a lot of the hmm. demand of the that. nervous system, takes a lot of those electrical signals. So when you go to extend, right, you're kind of fighting your hand because your hand has to take a lot of electrical signals to hold on that bar. So there's a little trick here. Right? It's what we call a hook grip. So if I have this bar, I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to hook it on the bar. And I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to close over it. Now you might get a finger, you might get two fingers. But what that does, all I have to do is a pinch those couple of fingers and my thumb is trapped here. It's a little uncomfortable at first, but when you go to extend and actually kind of do that jump and shrug, your hand is going to lock into the bar. So like, if I pull here, as long as I've got those two fingers pinched, my hand's staying in the bar. Have you ever used lifting straps before? Like little like straps that tie you into the bar? It's just doing that with your thumb. All right? So we can literally sit there, Right? Like, come on, rip the bar out of my hands. Right? Like, come on, you can pull on it, right? Pull, pull, pull. All of a sudden, I start to lose that. Right? Rip the bar out of my hands. Right? All of a sudden, we can sit there because now I'm locked in to that position. So if you start to use that, it's going to help you then keep one. It's going to help keep it close. You can use more energy to go towards your legs to create more power. Alright? Now, we use that. We're going to go into that turn over. All you're going to do right is you relax the hand. You extend, high pull, catch. Now you're just going to ride it down, right? So you ride it down in that front spot position. You're just going as low as you're capable of, okay? The big thing is we don't, this is going to help us learn to not starfish. So if you get in this position, and we jump, catch, ride it down in the front squat, and then stand up. It's going to help us learn a pattern where we don't all of a sudden end up this and this weird thing. Now notice when I relax my hand, I just let go of my thumb. I just let go of it. And then when I go to re the bar, I can just roll it down and pull my hand, thumb, wrap back up. Okay? So, you're just now putting it back in together, extend, catch, and then ride it down as low as you can in your squat. Okay? If that ends up being just like a couple extra inches, that's fine. Okay? But just try to work, maybe five to like two sets of five. So, feet going underneath the bar, so we're starting with those feet underneath our hips. Toes are pointed out a little bit. We're trying, I like to kind of call it a gorilla position. Okay, it sounds kind of funky to say gorilla and it's going to lift the weight. But we're trying to get in that position where we're not really squatting or we're not really hinging like we're going to deadlift. Okay? So if you don't trap bar deadlift, this is a little bit more closer to using a trap bar. Alright? But the bar is going to set up right over the top of your feet, so right across the middle. So you should almost see it's like the very tops of your shoelaces on one side, 
the very bottoms of your shoelaces on the other side of the bar if you're looking straight down. Okay? So we're pulling ourselves down in this position. We're trying to get to this point where the weights and the ball of our foot are right behind it. Okay? Because that way, when we go to pull the bar off the ground, we're pulling the knees back and out of the way, and we're going to shift the weight to our heels. Okay? Now notice, the angle of my back didn't change. Okay? And if it does, it's very slight. Pulling the knees back and out of the way, and back. Alright? It doesn't seem like there's any of the faculty in here. This is my favorite thing to tell them. Don't be a stripper. But don't be a dancer in a rap video. Everybody's kind of seen like a rap video, right? Everybody's seen. I, I haven't seen the walk video. I just watched the Grammys and I think I got enough of that just abhorrence in my mind. Right? <laughs> Everybody knows, right? We're not pop on and rapping it. Okay? So you're not coming here and butt up and then picking it up. Okay? Weight starts right behind the balls of your feet. Knees come back and out of the way. That way when we come up, stand. Punch and catch. Okay? Just like we did with the snatch. We're going to break it down into components. So, you're just going to pull it up to your knees and you're going to set it back down. Alright? And then you're going to go through, jump, shrug, high pull, and then you'll put it all together, push through the floor, jump, shrug, high pull, punch the elbows through, ride it down to your comfort level. Okay? Ride it down to your comfort level. So, that whole thing looks like this. Knees back and out of the way, set it down. Knees back and out of the way, jump shrug, high pull. Set that down. Knees back and out of the way, jump shrug, high pull, catch. Ride it down to your comfort level, and then stand back up. Go through it once, then take a second once somebody else do it. Go through it twice, 